Congregation, please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Connie was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into his death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in the death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in the resurrection like his.
Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. and mercy. We give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Connie and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we may also be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading is from Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, Yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel. 
Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid, laid him. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she did not know that this was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Now supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, went and announced this to the disciples. She said, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge 
Ben, John, <coughs> sisters, family, friends, those who have traveled near and far, families most grateful for that. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, what a joy it is to know that the Lord Jesus Christ has shed his blood on Good Friday for us. His blood atones for the sin of the world, for you, for me, for Connie. 1 John 1 says this, it says, The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us, it, it purifies us from all sin. And when in holy baptism the Lord put his divine name upon Connie, he delivered all the benefits of his Good Friday death given to her. There, Jesus promised that in holy baptism, she would be his. That the whole thing would come to fulfillment at the resurrection of her body on the last day. Now Connie waits for that magnificent promise from our Lord. She rests now in the nail-scarred hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. And quite frankly, so do we. So do we. For now we look for a happy reunion in heaven with the resurrection of the body on the last day. No more sickness, no more lung issues, no more joint pains, no more sin, no more death. Only eternal life to be lived out in the Holy Trinity with perfected bodies just like our Lord's resurrected body, when Connie's body will be raised imperishable, immortal, just as we heard in the epistle reading. Now, in Connie's earthly life, the Lord Jesus Christ used her in so many ways. That's because when you are a believer, you live sacrificially in love for the sake of other people. And so Connie loved her husband, her family. She loved this congregation dearly. As you would sing in practice in choir, she'd share how much she enjoyed being here at St. Paul. And the community here loved her too, just as Jesus loved her. Connie's kindness and generosity were the Lord's good use of her for our benefit. And for that, we are thankful to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so today it is good, it is right to honor Connie, who has gone on before us. And first we honor her by thanking God for all that he accomplished through her. Connie, together with all the faithful who have gone on before us, they are now in the church's hall of fame, we might say. They're among the heroes of the faith. Again, we thank God for the blessing that he gives to us through servants like Connie. Next, we honor her by imitating her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Namely, that means just how she lived as a justified sinner who trusted not in her own holiness or works, but trusted solely in the mercy and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for her. All the believers of old of every generation, all those who can look down from heaven upon us would have us look to our Lord Jesus, for he is the author and perfecter of our faith. And that's what Connie would want for each and every one of you, that you would trust solely in Jesus. Now speaking of honoring, thanking, and imitating those who have gone on before us, our gospel reading takes us to the garden of that empty tomb that Easter Sunday morning. There was another woman, Mary Magdalene. She's going to the tomb to complete the burial of her Lord Jesus. She was up early that morning to buy spices and oils in order to anoint Jesus' corpse. She made her way in the semi-darkness to the Lord's tomb. She saw that the stone had been rolled away then Mary assumes the worst. 
They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I do not know where they have put him. Now Mary knew what Jesus had told her while well, he was still alive there, namely that he would be killed, and that in three days he would rise again. You see, Mary was a woman of faith. She knew how to count from Friday to Sunday. None of that's in question. But her first impulse was not ours. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You see, it's hard to believe in the resurrection because our experience is that we do not see people rise from the dead. Nonetheless, we confess the resurrection of the body every Sunday in our creeds, the Apostles and the Nicene creeds. We believe in the resurrection of the body. We believe in the life everlasting because our Lord Jesus promised it. And because he verified it in the resurrection of his own body from the dead. So eternal life means a life in the body risen from the dead. And this is the hope that was echoed in the Old Testament reading this morning. You heard Job say this, Even though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I will see God. Yet we have, when we face the death of those whom we love, like Connie, when we stand at their graves, we struggle. Sometimes we have a hard time wrapping our heads around this word, resurrection. Mary Magdalene certainly did. You see, her dear friend Jesus was dead. He had been crucified. She was there at the foot of the cross. She was the disciple who stayed there to the end. But now, now his body was gone. And this is too much for her to bear. And so she stands by the tomb, her eyes flooded with tears of grief. Deep sobbing, I'm sure, could be heard in that still, dark morning air. But she mustered enough courage to look inside the tomb, to see the two angels sitting where Jesus' body once lay. There, upon that stone ledge, the sacrifice for the sin of the world had been laid. And the angels look in awe. At this point, Mary still does not recall that our Lord promised that he would rise on the third day. And again, that's understandable because grief has a way of clouding our thinking. It has a way of muddying our minds testing our beliefs. That's why God sends angels to preach. Why are you weeping? The angels ask. They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. Do you see how personal this is? My Lord. In the midst of her tears and grief, it's then that our Lord Jesus comes to her. Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Now at first she does not recognize who it is. She thinks it is the gardener, and so she pleads with him. If you've taken him, please, please tell me where you put him so I can get him. He calls her by name, Mary, and it's then she knows. Tears of joy replace those tears of sorrow. Rabboni, she exclaims, my rabbi, my teacher. She falls to the ground, embracing his feet. She lost him once. She wasn't going to let him go. It's then that our Lord Jesus says, don't keep holding on to me. There's no need to hang on. I'm not going anywhere. But I've not yet ascended to the Father. Now, I promise I will be with you always in ways that you cannot even imagine. Yet, I want you to now go to my brothers 
and tell them that I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And so Mary went and told the disciples. Mary was the very first eyewitness to our Lord's resurrection. She was the one whom our Lord Jesus sent to the disciples. Hers were the first human lips to say those glorious words, I have seen the Lord. The disciples would see later that day, but Mary was the first, the eyewitness, and on top of that, she's a woman. Now perhaps that's something that passes us by today, but something just magnificent and marvelous just took place. Back then, this was really something. Mary was a chosen disciple. She called him rabbi. Folks, this is radical. That the Lord Jesus would select her to bring the good news to the disciples was simply off the charts. Back then, a woman's testimony holds no legal te standing. And yet Jesus sends her to tell what she has seen. This is the same poor woman who was plagued with seven demons, yet now she has the privilege of being the first in the world to speak the good news of Easter morning. She has a very unique place in that day of history, a unique place in the hall of fame of the church along with her sister, Connie. And we thank God for Connie today. And as we do, we should remember and give thanks to Mary Magdalene, the first eyewitness and proclaimer of the resurrection. She boldly pro proclaimed the risen Lord Jesus to a group of men who were predisposed not to believe her testimony because she was a woman. And as we remember Connie's faith today, let us also remember Mary Magdalene's faith. For her faith was forged by the word of Christ, by the Holy Spirit. Mary was a sinner, not because she had seven demons, but because she was born a sinner, just like Connie was, just like you were, just like I am, we all are. Mary's demons were simply a spiritual sickness over which Jesus demonstrated his power. Mary trusted Jesus, who healed her. In that trust, Mary followed him all the way to the foot of the cross and did not abandon him. As we remember Connie today, let us remember Mary's works of faith and her devotion, her tears of grief, her tears of joy, her happy embrace of the risen Lord Jesus, and the joyous good news that the Lord put upon her lips. For folks, without her, we wouldn't be here today. I have seen the Lord, she said. Mary Magdalene speaks to us today through the words of the gospel, and she delivers all of this to us. I have seen the Lord. Of course, we, like Connie, have not seen the Lord as Mary did. That's not been given to us. But we have been given to hear the word of the Lord. We hear Jesus' word preached to us. And we, like Connie, receive our Lord's absolution. We kneel and receive the body and blood he shed for us so that we may embrace him just as Mary did that resurrection day. And we disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we too have something to tell, just like Mary Magdalene. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. His death atones for all our sins. His life is our life. His glory is our glory. Why? Because Jesus is risen from the dead and now lives and reigns to all eternity. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Connie believed this. She will be raised on that last day. 
And listen again, once more to that epistle. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. And oh, what joy we will have. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace that passes all understanding guards your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. If you're able, please stand. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant to all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, though they may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Connie and all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church they may be have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Connie and for all the blessings you bestowed upon her this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he has destroyed the power of death, and that by his resurrection he has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence, because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. says the Lord, he who believes in me will live, even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, 
You gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just as a word of instruction, we will be going out to the committal service immediately following this funeral service. If you are unable to meet us out graveside, it's understandable the ground can be uneven. Please uh, enjoy some refreshment in the fellowship hall, and we'll be back very soon for a lovely lunch. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated.